Hey everyone, North Central here. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing another garden tour, but we're just going to concentrate on the garden here in the back of the house because the tomatoes and plants that I have in the side yard in that garden bed, you know, tomatoes are tomatoes, like I said in the very first episode of this year's garden tour. And I really want to concentrate mostly on the steakhouse and the super sauce. The West Virginia 63s are doing well. They're producing tomatoes. No real big change there. But with these, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer and let you see the tomatoes since this is the first year of these. And then we've got to do a little bit of maintenance to these plants. So hang in there. We'll come a little closer. All right. So we're down here at the very base of the plant. And this is the one of the steakhouses. And you can see here that I've cut off the limbs almost a good foot and a half up. And the other leaves are a bit nice, dark green, doing what they're supposed to do. The ones that were down here near to the bottom were getting really yellow and nasty looking, especially the one, these two right here. Now I cut these off a few days ago, but one thing that I always do is take the leaves off the very bottom. That way they don't turn that yellow and they get more susceptible to blight and other diseases that can come on these plants. Now these are hybrids, so they're supposed to be really, really resistant to disease but I still don't like to take a chance and I still trim them all the way down to make a nice looking healthy plant. So let's move up to the top and we'll show you what's going on up there. All right, so this is the top of the plants here. And as you can see, they have outgrown their cages and are really starting to lean on them. And I've got tomatoes, you know, down here inside the cage going, but up here, I don't want these growing outside the cages because eventually they're going to get tomatoes on them. They're going to keep growing up and they're going to eventually start to really bow down and it's not really good for the plant. So, and it's going to start pulling the cages over as well. So these are indeterminate plants. So what I'm going to do, pull out my multi-tool here, is I'm going to top the plants. And by topping them, I mean, I'm just going to take them and cut them right off. That one didn't cut exactly where I wanted it. And what that's going to do is basically stunt the plant and not let it grow any further up. It is going to produce a little bit more of the suckers and stuff coming out, but I can trim those off every few days and not have any problems. What that's going to do is make this plant concentrate more on bearing fruit. Okay. So you can see I've got a big cluster of flowers here that's going to bear fruit and clusters all the way down. So let me go ahead and step over here to the back and I'll cut the other one back. So this one you can see I trimmed a sucker off right here and I've got another note of flowers coming in here. But I don't really want those up here. It's too high. This one is being supported by this limb right here over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in right here and I'm gonna cut it off and take that much of the top of the plant out. Now, if I wanted to, I could get a pot or something like that and go ahead and strip this down and put this in the ground. But I've got enough tomato plants to suit me. I don't have any plans of putting them in hydroponically downstairs right now. So this becomes trash. I just wanted to give you a nice little look of some of the fruit that it's producing. These are, of course, again, the burpee steakhouses. There's a comparison to my hand, and I got five of them growing right here. Pretty good size, but with topping them like I just did, it's gonna put more emphasis on going ahead and producing fruit. Now you can see right here, this one's gonna be supported by part of my cage here, which is exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and move over to the other plant, and I'm gonna to top it as well. So this one has really, really sprouted a lot. It has split four different times. So I've got one split here, one here, one here, and of course one back here that's growing outside the cage now. So I'm, I want to go ahead and save this bunch of flowers right here. So I'm just gonna cut it right here at the top. Take the top off that one. Go ahead and sucker that. Stuck through that. Again, I've got flowers right here on this one. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Again, on this other one, I've got flowers at the top and flowers here with a little tomato started there. So I'm going to go ahead and take it right here. Again, over here on the back side, I've got this the flowers here, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and cut it just above those flowers here. I'm gonna try and put that back inside the cage if I can. It needs to go inside the cage. Even if I gotta lift the cage up just a little bit, I don't want to hurt the plant. <laughs> Something like that. I did skin it just a little bit right there. That should heal up okay. I've still got this group of flowers here at the top, which will produce, be held up by the cage here. Same thing with the other ones here on top. And then I've got the tomatoes, a few more different uh, things of flowers on the back side going down. This is a good, healthy looking plant right here. So keep watering, keep them good, well fertilized. And this should produce some big, big tomatoes. At least that's the thought process and the hope. So let's go ahead and show you the peppers on the sides of this and then we'll move over to the super sauce. Alright so these are the blazing bananas and this thing has little banana peppers all over it which is absolutely great. Get some of the dirt off that so you can see that if you can see it. There's not a lot of maintenance to this. I've got it tied down here at the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and tie it right up here at the top. In fact, I'll do that right now. You know, tying plants is really, really a good way to, to keep them up, especially if you're staking them and going up stakes. I'm gonna do this one right here on this great big piece of uh, where it's sport right here. Right here, that should support pretty much all of it. And tying plants is also a great way to practice knots. At least I think so. So I'm just gonna tie a bowline knot around this plant and then secure it to the stake. If you're not familiar with the bowline knot, it's a required knot by the Boy Scouts. And I happen to be an old Boy Scout way back when, so it's a knot that's, that's I've kept with me for a long time. Now I'm just going to secure it to the stake. The bowline knot, all it does is puts a loop at the end of the rope. And if you tie it right, you can tie it right around the plant to where it's actually around the stem, which I just did. Do a couple wraps. Do a single cinch. And we're done. And I'm going to get a real close up here to let you see some of these great peppers growing on this plant. Okay, so if you can see these peppers, here's a pepper and here's a pepper. There are little banana, blazing banana peppers everywhere. Now this is the blazing banana pepper from Burpee. The first year I believe that it's out, which is another reason why I want to showcase this one and see how it grows and how I do things. But little peppers everywhere. Peppers are really, really slow to start, but once they start producing, they can really, really put them off. And this thing's got little buds and flood, new flowers getting ready to come out. There's a nice little flower there and little peppers everywhere. This plant is doing great. Okay, so we're over here in the other bed where I have the two burpee super sauce tomatoes. And then of course on either end, I have the California bell peppers. Uh, again, these plants are indeterminate, so they're growing up, and this one's already coming out of the cage at the top. 
not quite far enough for me to be topping it yet, so I'm not going to. This one's got a little bit more to go. So I do have some desuckering to do. And on top of the desuckering, I've got some trimming down here at the bottom. So let me bring the camera down here up close and show you what I've got going on. Okay, so these plants really tend to weep a lot. And what I mean by that is if you look at the stems and the leaves, it's more of a weeping plant. They come out and then down. So some of them are kind of deceiving. But this one here, down here near the bottom, you can see how it's eat up with all the different insects and stuff. So that's got to come off. Take it right here and just cut it right off. Same thing with the one on the back side. Cut it right off. This one off. This doesn't hurt the plant. It gives the plant room to breathe. And you can see I've got grass stuff growing up around it. I gotta take that out. But it allows airflow to stick around the bottom of the plant and it keeps it from getting any type of disease or anything like that. So this plant's good to go down here at the bottom. Now I just need to go ahead and desucker it a little bit. Okay, so I went ahead and desuckered everything. I trimmed them back down top, trimmed a little bit off the edges and stuff to make it to where it could breathe better, more air circulation can get into the plant, make it do better. Let's move on over here to the California bell peppers. And these things, you know, this is my first year growing them. I'm not real sure about them yet. Uh, it's been raining plenty. They've been getting plenty of rain. Uh, they've been getting uh, plenty of nutrients. I've got fertilizer and stuff on them, organic fertilizer on them. And they're growing, but I don't see any peppers on it yet. I'm hoping that it'll take off sometime here soon. Or it's going to be end up being too late, but they are doing well. Same thing with the one on the other side. It looks pretty similar to this. Comes up with these nice big leaves here coming off of it. And then just kind of bunches up here at the top. So not sure, but uh, we'll keep it... Uh, Keep, keep it in the series here as it grows. Like I said, it's my first year of growing it. All right, so these are the Kentucky Blues, uh, the green bean. And some of the leaves really got eaten up. And I came out here the other day and I started going through all the leaves and I picked off and killed several June bugs. And so it's, it seems to be doing pretty good. The problem with the habit is now is some of the stems are starting to grow over the top of my trellis system here. I don't want them to go any further. I don't want them to get up into the gutter or on the roof or anything. But these things are just plumb loaded with flowers and little tiny things that are starting to become green beans. And of course, that's the goal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bucket to stand on and I'm going to top the tops of these, just like I did the tomato plants, cut them off to where they're not going to grow any further up. All right, so hopefully you can see this up here okay. This one right here that I'm shaking. Grab my multi-tool, I'm just going to snip it right off to where it doesn't grow up any higher. Do the same thing to the one growing over here beside it. That's going to keep it from going up any higher and it's going to make it produce more into the green beans instead of growing vines. Okay, so beside the green beans, on either side of the green beans, I have these sweet relish peppers growing. And these are the ones that my brother-in-law gave me. They're kind of like a, a, a green or red type of banana pepper, but they're very, very sweet. And they have peppers now growing on them, but producing more flowers. Here's a flower. There's a flower that fell off. But it's got peppers all over it. There's a nice big one here in the back. And both these plants, as expected, are doing well and they are producing. All right, so right here in front of the green beans, this is a Detroit dark red beet. I have two plants here, another plant here, and another one down below. I planted a whole row of these, and the problem with, with what I had is most of them just didn't come up. But these ones did. These are actually some of the better looking plants that I've had. And everything looks okay with them so far. So we'll see how they do. And I'll keep, uh, keep 
keep an eye on them and when they do something else I'll put it up. Okay, so these are the ones that I have in my self-watering containers here that I made from five gallon buckets. And you can see, of course, it is starting to come out over top of the edge. So what I want to do is I just want to cut it right up here and top them. That way it's putting more into the fruit than it is growing up. Top this one here. Top this one here. And top this one here. Take the split off. It does have some tomatoes on it. It's not doing as well as the ones down in the garden bed. I don't know if it was it's because I just didn't fertilize it well enough or what, but it's getting plenty of water. Maybe it's just harder for it to suck water up or whatever it is, but it's a smaller plant. It's not doing quite as well, but as you can see, it will grow in a container. So these are the other two, uh, this one here and the one in the back. They're both super sauces. And you can see what I mean by the yellow leaves here near the bottom. And I'm just going to trim those off. Just like so. Gives it more room down here at the bottom. The insects won't be able to get to the leaves as well. And there's no tomatoes on this one yet, but it does have... The flower bulbs, looks like the bulbs are, are, are done and it's going to start producing some, uh, some tomatoes. Didn't grow as well as the ones that are in the bed. Again, it could just be me with the fertilizer problem, but it does get plenty of water, so I would say it's just the fertilizer. Alright, so to finish it off, whenever I do my cuttings and stuff, my trimmings to the tomato plants and peppers or whatever else I have in the garden growing, I always end up back here at the composter. And my scraps, my scraps go right in. Compost everything that comes out of the garden. Do a few turns, mix everything around. And that's it. We're done. Till next time, this is North Central.